we're at round two. All right, so everybody, today we have Katherine Yates, um, and so she is the director of analytics at Boston University Men's Ice Hockey. Um, her topic is challenges and frontiers in adopting analytics in NCAA ice hockey. Uh, this fall, Katherine will enter her third full season working with the Boston University Men's Ice Hockey team in an analytics capacity. A graduate of Brown University and Boston University with degrees in physiology and mechanical engineering, she works with the Terriers coaching staff to evaluate player performance using advanced statistics. Uh, I'm Katie, thank you for the introduction. Um, yeah, so today I'm going to be talking about um, using analytics in NCAA ice hockey. Um, and uh, this, uh, this past fall I was officially named the Director of Analytics uh, for the BU Terriers, which to our knowledge makes us the first of the 61 D1 teams to have a staff member specifically dedicated to this. Um, while my favorite thing in the world is getting really in-depth into numbers, my least favorite thing in the world is losing my job because I told everyone everything about our team. Um, so I'm going to be talking in more of a general sense um, about the ways in which using analytics in college is different from in the NHL um, and some of the, uh, some of the barriers keeping this from being more of a widespread thing uh, in the NCAA. Um, so historically, BU hockey doesn't need that much of an introduction. Um, if you've seen Miracle, you, uh, you know what's up. Um, but even in just the past three seasons, um, I've had the opportunity to work alongside some really extraordinary young players. Um, an AHL Rookie of the Year, AHL Man of the Year, um, 13 different players who've represented the United States, Canada, and Sweden at the World Junior Championships. Um, I think 19, might be 20, 19 NHL draft picks, and uh, some ginger kid who has been doing pretty okay for Buffalo. Um, so obviously there are major differences um, working in college. Um, it's, you know, it's really exciting getting to see these young players sort of mature into leaders and take the uh, first steps into their professional careers. There are obviously big differences between college and the NHL, the AHL, any other pro level. Um, and while it's, uh, while it's entertaining to juxtapose uh, Patrick Harper with Brent Burns just for the dramatic effect, um, the differences go way past just what your players look like into um, the structure of your team, the, governments of the, the governance of the league, what information is kept during games, and the ways that that information can be most effectively used to benefit your team. So far and away, the biggest barrier um, to working with analytics at the college level is availability of information. Um, when you look at the NHL, the sheer amount of information that the league publishes is massive, at least to me, <laughs> working primarily in college um, and doing, you know, working with a few NHL guys on the side, I sort of, you know, I look at the amount that they publish, I'm like, this is great, this is awesome. You get for every game a, you know, a location-based play-by-play of every event that happened on the ice and where it happened. Um, and that location data has to live somewhere. So with a basic competence in web scraping, you you know that's that's for you. Um, you get full time on ice and shift report for every player for every game. And at the end of the day, with relatively little effort, you can effectively recreate games. You're not going to get the super granular things, the you know passing zone entries, things like that that you'd have to track for yourself. But it's a huge percentage of of the workload that can be easily automated. Um, this is a first draft of, doesn't look that pretty, but it serves the purpose to demonstrate that that information's out there and you can find it and you can get it. And, you know, rather than having to spend one, two hours, you know, up to three for a single game tracking that from video, you uh, press run and watch cat videos for half an hour and then you have the whole season. It's awesome. Um, contrast to college, which we get across the board the very basics and very little else. Um, for every game we get um, a basic score sheet, you get goals, assists, uh, penalties, shots on goal, and that's about it. Um, you can also find this list of what looks like it would be the components of Corsi, so shots on goal, shots wide, blocked, uh, etc. But it's really only the ones that that person took himself, so it doesn't really, on the individual level, give you that much added value aside from, hey, Hicks uh, blocked as many shots as the whole North Dakota team, which was pretty awesome. Blocked uh, 17 shots in one game. Um, so this game, we uh, beat North Dakota double overtime. Very exciting. About 90 something minutes of hockey. 92, 93. Our goalie made about 60 saves. We uh, were down in the tunnel, jumping up and down afterwards. One of our defensemen came over and go, shit, you're going to have so much video to do. 
And that's really, you know, that's really what it is. Anything, any information that's, you know, going to be worth having, anything location-based, anything time-based, attempts against for your defensemen, anything like that, you're going to have to go through and do from video yourself. And it's tedious and it's time-consuming, but it's really the, the only way that we have right now. Um, Roster turnover. Like any self-respecting BU person, I firmly believe in never missing an opportunity to say mean things about BC. We're not the same. Don't mix us up. Um, if you know any BC people and want to get them riled up, tell them that it's not in Boston, it's in Newton. Um, <laughs> but I digress. Um, roster turnover in the NCAA is going to be the limiting factor to any database work that you're going to do. Um, it really is, you know, it's it's an animal. Um, last year, from last year to this past season, on a 25-man roster, BC turned over more than half of their roster. They la uh, had 15 guys leave and 13 guys come in. Um, last year, they were one win away from the going to the national championship game. They made it to the Frozen Four this year. They didn't even make the tournament. Um, and it's really, you know, there's no 10 years of Perry and Getzlaff. There's no 10 years of McDonough and Girardi. You're the Vegas Golden Knights every year. <laughs> Your players are in front of a different goalie every two to very rarely four seasons. So you really don't have the ability. A lot of things that you'll see, people doing work in the NHL and the public sphere especially, will be sort of, can you, you know, can you extrapolate? Can you use years one through nine of Perry and Getzlaff to get an idea of what year 10 of Perry and Getzlaff is going to look like? And you can. Um, with, you know, with good regressions, you can definitely do that. Um, trying to do that uh, in college is kind of a fool's errand because you have a completely different team every year. And then you also have the added dimension of you have 18 year olds becoming 19 year olds becoming 20 year olds. And um, like was asked uh, of Michael at then, there's really no telling how guys are going to mature physically and mentally through that span of time. Um, and then the other side of that point is the necessarily short career in the NCAA. Your players are with you for an absolute maximum of four seasons. Um, at a top end program, that's going to be three or two or one. So you really don't, you, you know, presents an interesting, if you go on Yahoo Sports or something like that towards the end of the summer, um, every other article is going to be, is, is this rookie who did really well going to hit a sophomore slump? And you can't really tell. Nathan McKinnon tanked my fantasy team his second season. I'm not mad about it. It's fine. Um, Half our, about half our team this season are literally going to be college sophomores, so uh, that's fun. Um, so just as a really, you know, very stark demonstration of this, um, which admittedly when I made this presentation I assumed that he would be playing this next season, and this is kind of upsetting, um, Yarmir Yager, his past, uh, his past five, six seasons, um, his course of percentage, so, you know, percentage of uh, all of the shots when he was on the ice, which percentage were taken by his team. If you had to wager a guess, if he, you know, if he if he gets signed for this upcoming season, you know, it's probably going to be somewhere between 52 or 55. That's a safe bet. Um, same question for uh, Jordan Greenway on the right. He's going to be a junior this season. Uh, freshman year, sophomore year. Which one of those is the outlier? You really don't, uh, it's really tough to, it presents a really interesting uh, situation, which is how do you reliably know what to expect from your players from one year to the next? Um, if you have, you know, a kid who's going into his junior year and he, you know, lit it up one season and kind of struggled the next, which is not to suggest that his 55% course he is a struggle. The kid is 6'6", 230. I'm not getting the puck off of him. Um, but the point is that you really don't have enough time with your players to get to see those points uh, even out and get to see sort of where they're going to, where they're going to level out to. Um, this one is difficult and potentially tacky to talk about, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. Um, we don't really have the resources in college that pro teams have, and I regret making this slide because I see the Panthers <laughs> sticker on your computer. Um, apparently, the Panthers have an army of interns who watch video in a windowless room. Um, we have me. Um, I might have the nice fancy title of director, but I am also my own army of interns. Um, when I said earlier that anything worth uh, anything worth having you're gonna have to track yourself I literally met yourself I'm the one who does that um, you know that uh, and that means that when we go to the West Regional at the NCAAs and get placed in Fargo um, I am on a flight to Fargo at 519 in the morning on game day and that overnight uh, that overnight uh, video analysis is done at an unfinished La Quinta that has a folding card table for a front desk because I uh, while BU does the NCAA does not recognize me as a member of our staff 
So I am not permitted to attend NCAA hosted events as an affiliate of our team because that takes us out of compliance in terms of what coaching staff you're permitted to travel with. Um, so that's a huge, you know, in the pros they more or less have the ability to say, the financial and regulatory ability to say, you know, we're into it, welcome aboard. Um, working within a university setting, you have the university, you have the athletic director, you have the NCAA, there are so many compliance related hoops and check boxes that there really needs to be compromise and sacrifice on both sides to, to keep the program NCAA compliant. Um, as, uh, NHL players, that's, that's their job, that's their day. They, you know, go to the gym, go to practice, you, could, you have all day to be talking to them. You could talk numbers if you want to, talk strategy, look at video. Um, NCAA Hockey, we are permitted to have 20 hours of countable team activities per week, um, and each game counts as three. So for a standard two game weekend, you have 14 hours with your team to get ready. And that includes everything, that includes practice, lift, video, anything that you're doing with the whole team, you basically have to stretch an NHL player's day, day and a half to last you a whole week. Um, and that's really where this kind of thing can serve really useful to the coaching staff, because if you're able to sort of meaningfully laser in on what were the really big key themes from this game or from this weekend that are the things that we really need to be addressing and really need to be focusing on. Um, that's gonna, that's gonna, where, you know, where your return on investment is gonna be the highest. Um, and I liked what uh, um, Jack Hahn from McGill said about how there's a pyramid of you should spend, it should be 100, you spend 100 minutes um, creating data that you can explain to the coaches in 10 minutes and the players, or and the coaches can explain to the players in one minute. Um, and that's even more top heavy in college because of the necessarily limited time that you have with the kids. They, you know, come in for a lift, go to class all day, go to practice, get dinner there and study hours. This is, uh, you really need to be able to kind of meaningfully laser in on what the major things that, uh, that you need to be working on. Um, and then there's the obvious, which is the amount of times that I have said the word kids. Um, I mean this in the nicest way possible. I love him to death. Clayton Keller is a 12 year old. Um, it's, you know, he's a great kid, but he's a kid. Um, and that's what makes this so fun. And that's what makes it, you know, worth watching and worth playing. Um, you know, you can have the best strategy and you can have the best technology, but at the end of the day, you're kind of also have to have a certain willingness to, uh, Put your, put your faith in the hands of a kid who was in fifth grade when you graduated from high school. Um, but that's, you know, that's what makes it unpredictable and what makes it fun. Um, so I've spent the past however long it's been um, talking about all the things that you can't do, being a big Debbie Downer about it. Um, but you can still do a lot of really interesting things um, in college. And they're going to sort of help you get closer to an answer that every hockey program is going to come up to eventually. Once you get into depth defensemen, your fifth, sixth, seventh defensemen, how do you meaningfully distinguish between them? Because you know, you're looking at guys who are gonna have about the same amount of goals and assists. We are a very deep team defensively. We're probably gonna have to sit a drafted defenseman this season. So who's who's that gonna be? And how do you sort of how do you get deeper into evaluating who that's gonna be? Um, I mentioned that we got placed at the West Regional in Fargo. We were uh, out in the West uh, with three teams that we had not seen before. So is there a way that we can sort of look at which team that we've seen is plays most similarly to the teams that we haven't seen so that we can, you know, be prepared and know, know what we're up against? Um, how does our playing style change when we go up a goal or go down a goal? Um, and, you know, there's, there's things like that. We had a uh, Friday-Saturday series uh, this past season where the Friday night we really struggled to, uh, to contain the other team through the neutral zone, contain their transition. Um, and we were able to sort of laser in and say, hey, 80% of the time with this particular defensive pair, this was, you know, this was the one they were targeting and this was how they were trying to do it. And so the Saturday night we were a lot better because we were prepared for it and we were, you know, knew what to expect. You know, if they're coming in on this pair, they're going in this side, chipping it around and waiting for him to go back. Um, you can, and it's also, so it's getting, it's helping the coaches have additional context for how they're working with the players and the units and the team as a whole. Um, and then also helping the coaches work together in ways that they might not have thought of. So that might be, um, I work closely with our strength coaches, uh, Ben Prentice and Kyle Check, um, sort of helping them integrate the ways that what they're doing with their off-ice training is being impacted on the ice. So as this, you know, big gray thing goes down, this orange thing goes up, that kind of thing. 
Um, there's really a lot that you can do, and it'll, uh, it definitely has benefited our program. Uh, to, why is this still lasering? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it has definitely benefited our program to, uh, to start incorporating this. Um, working with a college team is a very unique experience, and it's not without challenges, but it gives you a very, uh, it gives you a unique perspective that I think is, is definitely valuable. Um, you know, the most common thing that I think probably everybody in this room has heard on Twitter is, watch the game. Um, in college, you're watching the game twice, once in slow motion. You have to really, you know, you have to really know what metrics are going to, are worth you know, expending that time on and are going to give you that, uh, you know, are going to give you the return on that time investment. You need to sort, you need to know what you're watching and you need to know what you're seeing. Um, working closely with the players and with the coaches um, gives you a unique perspective on what kind of things that they get behind and what kind of things are not really received well and that they don't, you know, how things are incorporated, how things are understood, um, what kind of things that they don't really, uh, that they don't really get behind, and I, uh, the NHL players that I have worked with on the side have definitely appreciated that approach. Just seeing it as, you know, this is an athlete who's trying to improve their performance, and it's not just, you know, a detached data person behind a computer. It's sort of being able to, um, being being able to look at it from the perspective of a coach and uh, and from a player. Um, I think that as a league, we're definitely trying to sort of position ourselves as a really legitimate way to make it to the NHL. Um, so having you know having teams adopt as many of the strategies that you see pro teams using is only going to benefit us as a league. Um, and I hope that we start to see this expand in college because uh, I think that it's only going to benefit us. And once our uh, as our numbers grow, that's kind of how we're going to start addressing uh, addressing the other issues. Um, this is, we have to play at Fenway too, which is pretty fun. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, lots of time for questions. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you, does BU um, primarily only get 18 year olds or do they go up to the juniors and bring in some of those <coughs> as well? Um, we tend to, we don't have a ton of overagers, we're lucky. We tend to get a lot of kids through the national development program, so that'll be 17 year olds, 18 year olds. Um, we do, you know, have uh, have a couple kids who will come in as, you know, 19, 20 year old freshmen who will come in from uh, either the USHL, sorry, USHL or other, uh, other leagues to sort of, you know, you always need your four year players and your depth players, but we're lucky that we do tend to get a lot of true freshmen uh, predominantly. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm from the University of Denver, so you've heard of our program. Uh, <laughs> that was that was <laughs> unnecessary. <laughs> anyway, uh, Congratulations. Yeah, it's not me though. Uh, I'm just curious, like, how much of your time is spent, um, like, sort of basic reporting for like coaches and players versus doing like more modeling type stuff. Yeah, so it's sort of what I'm doing sort of depends on where in the cycle, you know, you know you, that we have sort of five days off and then two days of absolute chaos and then sort of rinse and repeat. Um, so during the weekends, I am usually, uh, I'll usually work overnight Friday into Saturday because, you know, we do see the same team again in 14 hours, 20 hours, however many it is. So we need, sort of need to get that turned around as quickly as possible. Um, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday tends to be sort of reporting from uh, you know what was happening this past weekend and then it'll sort of be ramping up into preparing for the next team and then also um, any downtime that I have I'll spend maybe one or two days a week working on sort of season to date or you know that um, looking at other teams sort of where we fit into the complexion of the NCAA as a whole um, working on modeling for uh, I've, I've tried to do some of the conversion stuff of what can we expect from our freshmen. I would do it better for the national development kids than the USHL kids, but uh, what are you going to do? So BU is looking to have you, for all the other D1 programs that don't have a dedicated position for analytics, mm -hmm. are they doing it and it falls to like an assistant coach? Um, just not doing it totally I think it's I think it's a little of each. I think um, the programs that we do know that have someone at least, you know that are at least incorporating this, it tends to be um, it tends to yeah fall to an assistant coach or um, sort of be subsumed under you know they'll have someone doing video and they'll sort of work on that as well. So either an assistant coach or video uh, video coach or um, occasionally I think Providence their uh, 
their hockey operations person does it, I'm not sure. Yep. Um, how do you figure out, how do you balance the need to do all the reporting and game prep versus spending time on maybe longer term research questions you might be interested in? Is that something you just like put off until the off season? Or? Um, Put off until the off-season, partially during the summer is sort of when I'll be doing sort of a lot of the structural, you know, getting ready for the season, looking into the long-term stuff. Um, also a uh, unfortunate willingness to replace sleep with caffeine. So uh, I, I, the perks of being in Boston, there is a Dunkin' Donuts on every corner, so you can always have it. There's always coffee. Um, yeah. Just going back to the topic of a miracle, like thinking of uh, Herb Brooks and the psych test he gave out, is that something you could use? Uh, in a sense to sort of project um, the time, like maybe maturity or something like that. Or that I, don't know. I don't know necessarily if it's something that you could project, you know, as concretely, but it is something that you definitely see working in college. You see the maturity, you know, uh, Michael brought up Charlie McAvoy. He is, you know, has matured incredibly. I was talking to him two days ago and he was saying how much he's going to miss BU and that he's going to graduate, he's going to come back, he's going to, you know, he's, he has really matured a, matured a ton. Same with Jack, same with, you know, a lot of our players. And uh, I know that uh, when we made the transition, when Coach Parker left and when Coach Quinn came in, we sort of, there was sort of a, uh, a period of let's, let's take a minute and find the right guys, not just from a hockey perspective, but let's find, you know, let's find the character guys as well. We had, you know, Mackers, like Doyle Summer B, guys like that who are going to be, you know, not only, uh, you know, extraordinary hockey players, but also are going to be extraordinary people, so. Yeah. Another question, uh, maybe two. Uh, anyway, do the other teams at BU have analysts as well, or is hockey unique? Um, I think we're the only one. I have been in contact uh, and talked to the athletic director about it, and he has been sort of, there is, uh, as a department, they're trying to, head that way and are sort of figuring out how that's going to, whether it's going to be, you know, one umbrella person who works with everybody or if it's going to be sort of, you know, certain teams are going to have uh, have their own people, but I think uh, for now I'm, uh, I'm it. Yep. You said you, you do a better job predicting the USA hockey players and the USHL players. Yep. And maybe the OHL too. Why do you think that is? Um, I mean, I think part of that is also uh, the uh, Definitely, you know, they've already been funneled in and identified as they're already the best of the best and they're the best kids in the country. So it's uh, it's not as uh, you there's not as much sort of variation in terms. They're across the board all really excellent hockey players as opposed to um, I'm not saying that, you know, people who come through the USHL are not, but it, you, you tend to see sort of a greater a greater range. Um, as opposed to the national development team, that's you know they're trying to they're trying to pick the absolute best. So it's sort of more consistent in terms of knowing what to expect because you expect really good hockey. <laughs> yep. Um, so I don't know if you said this at the beginning because I came in kind of late, but do you provide like what a individual player like uh, who's the wild greenwire? Um, would he could he come to you and you provide him any like insights on yeah, NHL, um, like you know is this a good time for me to leave like um I have I haven't had that conversation with them but um you know any of any of the guys know that they can you know come and ask me about anything we had uh, I've had a couple of them sort of uh, towards the beginning it was more sort of like we know you do something but what do you actually do. Um, had a couple of healthy scratches ask me that while I was sitting with them in a game. They were like, so like, what exactly, like, talk, talk me through it. Um, but then, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, it's just sort of whatever questions that they have about sort of their own performance or ways that they can, you know, ways that they can improve, sort of uh, things like that. But it, I don't really, I haven't really had the conversation of uh, is, it, is it time to go? That sort of uh, let them do that with the parents and uh, Quinny and the agents and that kind of thing. Um, there are some data providers and some video analyst companies out there. Do you use any of those? Um, we don't. I got an email from t uh, John Shaika's dad this season asking if we wanted to use their uh, use their company, and we uh, politely declined because that's basically just outsourcing me to a basement in Canada. They're basically just doing all the same <laughs> stuff. But so uh, no, we do not. It's, it's, it's me. 
What software do you use to make like the cool heat maps? Oh, um, so I mainly work in R. Um, the software that I use for tracking and collection is uh, one that I wrote myself because I was being a pain in the butt and was just like, I want it to do exactly what I want it to do and, you know, that's it. Um, and then for, uh, for the analysis and the visualiz visual visualizations, I work in R. Have you thought about open sourcing your um, tracking software? Um, I have, but it also would open source how kludgy of a coder I am. Like, I don't really know why it works, but it works. And I don't, uh, I don't know, it works, works for me. I don't know if I feel uh, confident in its professional caliber, but it uh, works for us. <laughs>